If you don't want to fry your scope or your car, you better check out this video. Okay, so there are lots of differences between the PicoScope 2204A and the flagship 4425A, but there's one big difference in particular that you need to be taken care of if you are using the 2204A. Let's check it out. Okay, before we start, if you want to get the most out of your Pico Scope oscilloscopes, whether it's a 2204A or the 4425, make sure you go and check out our new training. We've got an offer on at the minute, so if you're quick, you'll get in for a really good price. Okay, so besides the specs like voltage input, resolution, bandwidth, sample rate, there's one hardware difference in particular that you need to be very careful of if you're using the 2204A. Now the PicoScope 2204A you know is my favourite and it still is. It's such a powerful little bit of kit. Um, again in the training we show you how to get the full power out of this thing. However there's one thing you need to be careful of and that's with the grounds. So on the uh, inputs on the BNC here the outer bit is actually the ground and each one of these is actually connected together. It's known as a shared ground or a common ground. However, on the 4425A and uh, a lot of the other most recent automotive oscilloscopes, they have something called floating grounds or individual grounds where each of the grounds on each channel is independent of the other. Now this is one of the main features of the automotive scopes and we're going to have a look at that in a minute. However, that wasn't always the case. So some of the older PicoScope automotive oscilloscope also had shared grounds and as far as I'm aware it's probably only in the last 10 years or so that have actually moved to a floating ground setup. So why is this so important? Okay, so you can see on the screen now that we've got a image of a conventional kind of injector electrical setup. So we've got the engine control unit here, we've got the uh, power relay here and then we've got four injectors with a constant power supply and grounded by the ECU. So as long as the ignition is switched on and the ECU has grounded out the uh, control for the relay, this here will close. So now we've got a constant 12 volt supply or battery voltage supply to all four injectors. Then on this side, inside the ECU, basically we've got a switch for each individual injector. So that's important to know when we're measuring these injectors, especially with something like the 2204A. So how a lot of people uh, set up their oscilloscopes to measure these injectors, um, so we'll connect the oscilloscope up here to channel A, okay. We will put the positive lead round onto the positive side of the injector to measure battery voltage, and then we will take the ground lead or the negative lead and put it on the negative side of the injector or the ground side of the injector. So if you measure your injectors like this with your 2204A, there's something that you've got to be very careful of. Now let's have a look. Okay, so we've got our injector connected up to the oscilloscope and the engine is running and we're going to map out what this waveform is going to look like. So if we can imagine that this is our oscilloscope display, when this injector is turned off, we're going to have 12 volts on the top of the injector and we're also going to have 12 volts on the other side. Remember, the switch is open, so that 12 volts is going to go all the way through here. So what we're going to see on our oscilloscope is actually zero volts because the oscilloscope leads are actually looking at the difference between the two. If you've got 12 and 12, then there's going to be a difference of zero. So that's what our oscilloscope is going to display. So what we've got here is a flat line of zero volts. When we then close that switch and activate the injector, this is going to stay at 12 volts. And now this side is going to go to zero volts. So that means that we've got a difference of 12 volts. So our oscilloscope display will display a line up for 12 volts for as long as the injector's turned on. I say 12 volts, I mean battery voltage. Then what's going to happen is we will then turn the injector off. Okay, That voltage then is going to go back to 12 here. So we've got 12 and 12. So we will then get the oscilloscope display going back down to zero volts. What we'll also get is that spike that we're all used to seeing. Like that. Now this image here is probably not quite what people expect to see when they measure injectors. They're expecting to see the image that's flipped up the other way around. And some people, what they will do is actually 
flip those leads around. That is actually a really bad idea. And we're going to have a look on the car in a minute. So why is measuring injectors like this such a problem? Now, if we think about it, when the injectors turned off, we've got 12 volts on this line, which means we've got 12 volts on the negative side of the uh, scope leads. And that's going to go all the way down that ground. And we're actually then going to have 12 volts on each of those ground connections on channel B and the um, AWG channel for the waveform generator. That's quite a problem, especially if we then go to measure something else like um, a sensor. OK, so now we've just got a basic sensor set up here. Here's the sensor and we've got a five volt supply with the ground here. So what we would do is get channel B, go down here. We're going to connect the red lead up to the supply side and then the ground lead up to the ground side. So now can you see what's happened? We've actually now took this 12 volts here that we've got on the earth side of the injector and actually given it a ground. So what's going to happen up here now? This injector is actually going to be powered on constantly because we've bypassed that switch inside the ECU. See, the injector should always get its ground through the ECU. However, what we've just done is give it a ground through the scope itself. Now in cases like this, what you'll probably experience is the engine will start misfiring. However, in more extreme cases, depending on how much current is going to go through that circuit, you could also damage the scope. Remember, these oscilloscopes, they've not got, um, you know, big heavy duty wires in here. I'm not even sure if they've got a thermal cutout, you know, if, if you know whether they have or not, you know, let me know in the uh, description below. Let's go and check it out on the car and see what happens. Okay, so we're connected up to the 2204A. We've got the 20 to 1 attenuator fitted because of the spike that we can expect on the injectors. And if we have a look there, we've got the red lead in the uh, constant battery power supply and the blue lead is in the switch side for the injector. If we now go over to our waveform, we can see there then that we've got that waveform that I described on the uh, display a minute ago. So the one that no one really likes looking at. So don't be tempted to switch those leads over. I'll show you why in a minute. However, now we're connected up like this. I've got channel B connected and what some might do is then go and connect you know, channel B up to a sensor or something like that. So they get the black lead and put it on the ground. So just watch what happens. See that? Can you hear the engine misfiring? Not good. So basically what's happening there is that we've got that ground side connected all the way up to here. And basically we're grounding that injector through channel B. So that's why that was happening. Some people might have come across that before when taking their measurements. Right, let's swap these leads over and then see what happens. Okay, so all I've done is just swap those leads around. You can see now that red is to black and black is to red. The waveform is showing us something that we're more comfortable with looking at. However, if we look at the actual voltages on there, they're exactly what I said. You know, we've got zero and then it drops down because it's, it's the other way around. We've, we've switched it over. So now what I've done is I've got that ground lead off channel B and I'm going to be very careful. I've put a fuse on it because I have a feeling I know what's going to happen. So let's, oh, straight away, popped it straight away. This is something that you've got to be very, very careful of, especially when taking measurements with the 2204A, as much as I love it. Well, there goes my warranty on the 2204A. I hope you all thought it was worth it. Um, all joking aside, make sure you go and check out that training where we have a look at how you get the most out of uh, those PicoScope oscilloscopes. And we've also included a second course which goes through automotive oscilloscope diagnostics. So go and check it out. Links in the description below.